Hi, I'm Dr. Emma from Simple Physical Literacy. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the button below and watch all the previous videos on different reflexes. And for some more background information, please watch the video on retained primitive reflexes to find out what they're all about. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about what I call the hand, foot and mouth reflexes. Easy to remember, hand, foot and mouth. The hand reflex is the palmer reflex or the grasp reflex. And in an infant, if you put your finger into the middle of a baby's hand and stimulate the center of their palm, they will grasp it in a very cute gesture. Very handy for hanging off a branch if you're a monkey. Not so handy if you're learning how to write with a pencil. So that every time a child with this reflex still there grasps a pencil, the tension in their arms is unbelievable. So as a result, they have poor handwriting or illegible handwriting, poor fine motor skills. The plantar reflex is similar, but in the foot, if you press against the ball of the foot, the toes will curl under, and this should really be integrated by seven to nine months. If it doesn't go away, a child will be late learning to walk, will find it difficult to, to walk because every time their feet plant on the ground, their toes will curl under, and putting on their little shoes, every time you try to put on their shoes, the toes will curl and it will become difficult. As, a, as an adult, these if the if the if it's not integrated, um, these adults will have lower back pain and will have loose ankles and our tendency to have ankle twists. The Babinski reflex is another foot reflex. This time, if, uh, if it's stimulated along the side of the foot, the toes will curl under. So similar to the plantar, but this one is particularly important for developing stability and balance and grounding. So therefore, if a child doesn't integrate this reflex, they will have problems with stability and balance. They'll have problems engaging in any sport that requires balance and coordination. They tend to be flat footed or they might walk on their toes or walk on the outside of their feet. As a result, you can imagine hip joints can be affected and this can go long into life. There may tension up the legs and into the hips. Now, the mouth reflexes, the rooting and the suck reflex, the rooting reflex is when you touch uh, a baby's cheek, they will turn to the side, they will turn to the side that you've touched, open their mouth, open their mouth, thrust their tongue forward and get ready um, for, su for sucking, for the suck reflex to kick in. But if the rooting reflex doesn't integrate or doesn't go away, um, the lips and mouth and tongue will be hypersensitive. These children might be very sensitive to lumpy food, don't like different textures, um, they can be dribblers, have dental problems as their tongues sit a little bit too forward in their mouth. Um, so all you know, sensitive mouth feeding, messy lunch buddies, uh, this kind of spit, spitters and dribblers when they're chatting. The suck reflex is after the rooting reflex, the tongue thrusts forward, so it's a tongue thrust action, and the tongue wraps around the nipple to draw the milk and to, and to have that suck reflex um, for feeding. If this is retained, the child will have uh, problems with dental formation. So the teeth will often be uh, buck, the palate can be very narrow and high, they may have an overbite, um, speech articulation problems and because the hands and the mouth are so uh, closely linked they will often have fine motor problems because of the rooting or the suck reflex that hasn't been integrated it has an impact on their fine motor skills which is writing the babkin reflex is the one that wraps it all together so the babkin reflex in, a, in, a, in, in any uh, mammalian infant and in a baby um, is the one that the hands and feet need the breast to stimulate the milk flow. And you'll notice with a human baby, when they're being breastfed um, or even bottle fed, their little hands will often curl and often their toes will curl. So it shows you really the link between the hands, feet and mouth. Now, if this babkin reflex doesn't go away, these children have a, a link between their hands and mouth that, that really isn't very helpful. So when they're doing um, fine motor skills or manual dexterity skills like scissors cutting, their jaw and their mouth and tongue will often mimic that. So you'll find that a child who's using a scissors will be mimicking that action often up in the air. Or even when they're playing uh, the piano, their tongue will be going all over the place. You'll see children who are, um, who are writing tongue all over the place. So it can have a, um, an impact on their fine motor skills, on their mouth, on their dental formation, 
dribbling, speech, articulation, they might be slower to speak. Um, but never mind that, as they get uh, to be adults, adults learn how to cope with these and they start to clench their jaw together um, to stop this incessant mouth and tongue happening as a result of them doing some fine motor skills. So adults who still have the retained Babkin um, reflex will have clenched jaw, tension in their jaw, and the tension in the jaw goes into the neck, into the shoulders, down the arms. It can cause carpal tunnel syndrome, which is, um, you know, immense pain in the, the wrists, and it can have an impact on dental problems. It can also have a, an impact on very tense calf muscles as well, because it's the feet as well as the hands. So muscle tension everywhere that's um, not required, and an impact on stability, grounding, balance. So that's the link between the hand, feet and mouth reflexes. If you notice your child or any children in your class have any of these symptoms, dribbly, speech articulation, very fussy with foods or very messy lunch buddies or the head bath going on. Uh, very useful techniques are brushing, like stimulate the areas that they don't like to be stimulated. They're hypersensitive around the mouth often, so stimulate those areas um, using uh, different textured balls um, for squeezing like that. But visiting uh, a therapist, child centre method therapist, who's really um, on the ball about these issues, really would be your first course of action. Um, but it's really good to notice uh, any children that have these issues too. So that's it for the hand, feet and mouth reflexes. Uh, please subscribe to the channel by clicking on the button below or watch it via our website www.simplephysicalliteracy.com and see you soon. In the meantime, keep moving and keep well. Thank you.